Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Strata Hadoop World at the Javits Center in New York City. I'm here with Paul Kent. So Paul, you're with SAS. Yes. And we had a conversation last year at Strata Hadoop World. And can you fill me in on all the changes you're seeing with your traditional customers mm -hmm. in the data area? So what we find is most customers are graduating from that first project that generated a lot of excitement and this thing can work and wow. To, um, Let's build it in a bigger scale in our company. Let's build a, a bigger cluster. Let's host more than one project on it. And so it started to introduce a new set of challenges of how to, I like to call it, how to manage the cluster like a Montessori school. Everybody has to play nice in the, in the playground and not use all the toys all at the time, all at the same time. Um, but that's what most of them are going through. They're going through this modernization phase to the second generation or third generation of their cluster. And they're, uh, you know, they're dealing with a different set of problems. So are there any uh, particular use cases that stand out to you that you know, some of your your partners or ecosystem players have uh, have actually seen over the last year or so? Well, SaaS is broadly represented in, in many industries. Financial services is a huge customer, but you've probably heard lots of those stories. There's some very cool ones in our backyard. The um, local hospitals have, uh, instrumented up the, um, the amount of time they were doing CPR to resuscitate people. And one of their big data stories is that they learned over time that uh, they used to give up after eight or nine minutes. That was, you know, wasn't, wasn't, um, wasn't fruitful, carry on much. And their big data uh, investigations helped them to push that time out to 20, 22 minutes. And they've been successful in recovering patients in that end of the window. And so, not your usual big big data save credit card fraud uh, kind of story, but really a feel good story that um, democratized data. These weren't hardcore data scientists. These were EMT kind of folk, and uh, yet they were able to start playing with their own data. Well, that, that's interesting because you would think that if they had kind of data showing that it was 10 minutes and they gave up, yeah, some of them did. That's right. So uh, it, it was uh, great. They so, still so captured they, the they, data. They were, they were able to experiment and and uh, you know learn from from their experiments. We've, uh, we've got a story from the drug development industry, uh, cancer drug, tamoxifen. They used, to re they used to know it worked on 80% of the people, and uh, they didn't really know which 80%, so they'd prescribe it to you, and if you were that unlucky one in five, it didn't work, then they'd have to put you on a different kind of protocol after they realized. But now the big data and all the uh, gene sequencing that we can do, they've become much more accurate, and they really know which 80% it's gonna work on. That's not such a huge win for, for a drug that's broadly successful like that, but think about a drug that only works on 10% of the people. Uh, no drug company is going to build a drug that works on roughly one in 10 guys. That's not a business, but if they know exactly which 10% of the people it works on. So again, the big data story uh, uh, making improving our lives is, is um, uh, Interesting. Yeah, uh, and in that case, maybe it's uh, maybe not the drug companies because if it's improving one in ten, maybe we should still have it. Maybe it's just not the drug companies making it. Right. That you know, if there's something useful for people, maybe data can tease that out as well. Yes, uh, I think it's just uh, we're seeing more and more people uh, get into this experimental mode where fail fast, run an experiment, see if you're headed in the right direction. If you are, carry on. If you're not, then stop doing that. Dumb idea and try something else. So um, that's where the industry is right now. You're, you're seeing a lot of the traditional players are starting to see some success stories with their data? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, I think it's a fantastic uh, side effect of how abundant resources are in, uh, in the computer systems of the day. Uh, a modern Hadoop uh, cluster just got a magnificent amount of memory and uh, storage. Um, so uh, people can really do some audacious things that they were never able to never set up to, to do before. Um, and so do you see your ecosystem and the, and the typical SaaS partners, do you see them adopting a, a, a data stack wholly or are they migrating to it or are they, are they biting it all up in one big chunk or spinning up a project in more lean style? Uh, my my sense is that they're growing about, uh, going about the task of uh, assembling the data in one place. So this was the first challenge is that their data was siloed in many different systems and they're gradually bringing more and more of it to their data lake or reservoir or whatever vernacular they've been ingrained to call it. Um, but once they're starting to get that in place, they're uh, experimenting with lots of different tools on that pile of data. They're not, they're not building special uh, uh, infrastructure for a new idea. They're saying, 
we've got a, a, a cluster, we've got our data in that cluster, the, the tool that we want to try should run on that cluster. A great example of that is, is Spark. Spark's all the rage at the conference this, this year, and uh, I think one of the reasons it's, it's successful is it can just uh, install on a cluster and, uh, and run without requiring us stuff. One of the um, interesting challenges at SAS has been uh, getting our software to be friendly, to share the cluster with other things. Just, you can't move in and take over everything. You've got to uh, run well with tools like Yarn to do the resource management. You've got to learn how to share because I think that's the way it's going. People are building this, it's almost back to the 70s and a time-sharing mainframe. There's one yeah, of them and yeah. you got you got to learn how to share it. Yeah, so in, in a way what's new is old and well, I, uh, yeah. certain things go around the in the circle of life, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of that circle of life, if we sit down next year here, where do you see the industry being next year at this time? Um, I think you're starting to see signs of it already. So the focus on user interface and the whole end-to-end -end workflow that uh, um, a person gets into a flow while they're thinking about their problem and as if the system can respond to them before they lose interest, then they make much more rapid progress. Right. They get in a zone, and, and it used to be something that was reserved for programmers, but we really are trying to get all business analysts into a tool that responds so quickly so that their second question comes to them right there, and they try and they answer that, and they, so they, 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 they get towards the, their final answer in a, in a much more compact time uh, frame because it keeps them interested, because they stay in the, in the flow. And the, the software has to adapt that almost the answer to every question is, is one of the parameters or some of the data that the next question is going to be exactly. about. You know? And it, yep. it's not this, uh, calculate this here and put it there, and then it, it's, it's much more mashed up and, and seamless. And I think a lot of uh, user experience work is going on to make user interfaces uh, uh, facilitate that that uh, there's a huge amount of power in the back end of these systems, and now we're being able to um, make sure that the user interfaces are, are um, uh, match the user workflow, and they keep him engaged with his train of thought, and, and that's Instant, where you get this instantaneous huge, Yeah, you get this super productivity if you, yeah. you don't lose interest or start thinking about something else in the middle of, uh, of what's going on. That would be excellent, excellent. Right. So I, I hope we see that go that way, and uh, yeah. we'll have this conversation next year uh, and see if we're there. That'll be a good thing to check on. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thanks very much for having me.